Well, here we are today. We're leaving Tangal and we're on our way to Welagama. And it's going to be, it's only 51 kilometers, but it's going to be one hour and 16 minutes, which probably would be about one and a half hours due to the traffic conditions here. G'day legends. We've just arrived in our new location, the chill house in Welagama. And uh, I just thought we'd give you a quick rush through with the uh, facilities here. Fairly windy here, like it's, um, I can understand during surf season this place would be packed. But if you're not here to surf, it's quite good. So it's pretty well set up. Plenty of tables. There's an Irish bar over there. They've got Guinness. I've been told it's uh, an Asian style Guinness. You can see up the top there. That's where the rooms are we're staying at. There are some other rooms up the top there, but I don't want to walk up the stairs. It's too far. I drink too much piss, I'll fall down. So that's pretty much we're going to walk into reception here. We'll check out, we've got um, like the Irish owner. There's a reception here. Talk to you soon. G'day legends. Uh, we just arrived in Willagama. We arrived here fairly early in the morning. So we can get a nice uh, full day in here. So we thought we'd just give you a quick run down of the room like we normally do. So it's got a little bit of um, more fancy stuff there. But um, ocean view, balcony. A little bit of a touch up on the last place, which we couldn't get out of fast enough. We got up this morning and we left there like it was on fucking fire. Yeah, even look at some towel art. <laughs> oh yeah. Some of the places love this towel art. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Go through the bathroom. Um, Got to make sure the shit is okay. <laughs> oh yeah, nice and clean. At least, at least it's not green. That was pretty horrific the last time. Talk to you. This is the view from the Chill House Good Story, and we're going to do a bit of a 360 panorama to give you a bit of an idea of uh, what's around here. Just next door is that restaurant we went to last night. The Fujian, Fujian, and we have the ocean views, beautiful palm trees, and then you know, extremely tropical. And really, this time of year, I just don't understand why people aren't coming here that really aren't surfers. Like, I understand surfers going to Aragon Bay, then they come here afterwards, but there is still a little bit of surf though in the morning. again in probably another not very long and uh, have, a, have a beer, bring our own beers up here. There's the music. Yeah. yeah. Where's yeah, the we... music? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I was a thousand miles away. Yeah. <laughs> we go inside. Well yeah we are, we're off to go and uh, find lunch somewhere. Yeah. we got our Ooh. friends from Oregon Bay with us, Nepal and Louisa. Nepal. <laughs> She can be. <laughs> it's what a woman does. So we're going to get some vision from the behind so it'll look a lot better. And we've got um, all this food here, all homemade pretty much. It's not like a restaurant chef, it's all, they all do homemade food. The chicken, the vegetables. You know, you get all this for them, only be a couple of, a couple of dollars. Crazy sort of prices. So here we are, we just uh, finished up lunch and uh, had about two rice and curries. Uh, it was uh, six dollars, so US, so very inexpensive. What do you think, Di? It's good. Here we are down at the, uh, the, the waterfront at Wellagama Beach and we've got the uh, almost famous nice creams and uh, they've got nice cream bowls, ice frappes, smoothie bowls and smoothie drinks apparently it's all vegan i'm not really a, a vegan 
I'm not even close to a vegan, but I've heard these are really worth trying. So I'll, I will give it a go. And Di, what are you going to order, mate? In a colada. In a colada? Yeah. Okay, you do that, and I'll go get a bottle of rum. And then, um, you can have that, and I'll drink the piss. <laughs> Sounds good. Here we have the end result. Looking pretty impressive. This was 1500 rupees, which is about $4.50 in Australian. That's good. That's yep. So we're working to break our vow and actually eat something on the screen, but we're not. So we'll let you know at the end how good it was. So, Di, how was that? Um, that was absolutely amazing. And it's gluten free and it's nut free. And it was just. <laughs> Very good. I've just been told that this Buddhist temple here has got some really significant features about it because it's been around for a few hundred years, but it's also very significant because it has the big boa tree, which is the same tree that Buddha sat under when he reached enlightenment. So the priest from next door, he's not so happy about his window getting broken after all. So I don't think it's really an act of God now. It's, um, I think he wants someone to pay for it. So he's not real happy. Understandable though, like he's just doing his own thing and the cricket ball came through the window. Well, Sri Lankans really do love their cricket. I went down to watch the guy I met in Nepal to play and after this game he got five wickets, so it did work. And here we are down at the beach after work most of the guys come down here and they play a bit of beach cricket got all made out there in the ocean hopefully he doesn't get eaten by a crocodile well well he's gonna well he's he dropped it probably wish he was eaten by a crocodile to be honest that was a shocker Well, today we're outside Matara in Pariwi Dua Temple. And you can see uh, the old bridge there, which has uh, had better days. I'm not sure how long ago that was inactive, but the, the new bridge is a little bit better. Not, not much, but yeah, it's still working. So we're going to cruise across here and we'll see you on the, get the other side. We just paid... Uh thousand rupees for the two of us which is only about four dollars but pretty this much is what uh, it is. yeah uh, it's, it's not really worth coming over <laughs> Well, on our way back from Matara, we stopped in Marissa Beach, which is probably known as one of the nicest beaches in Sri Lanka. Although it's off-season and a little bit windy, it's still a really beautiful beach and really is a must-see for anybody coming in this area. Here we are at Taprabane Island, made famous by Rick Stein. He did a cooking class over on the island. I think it was about 15 years ago. I'm not quite sure. I didn't see the episode, but uh, I didn't realise that you can't really get a snow bridge across, so people either walk across. Uh, you could get a small boat, but you're going to struggle in those waves there on a little boat. So most people, uh, they, they carry their luggage across there as well because it's a hotel. And the guys that's then, they took across a couple of bags of concrete. It's only about waist deep at the moment, but as you can see, it is fairly low tide at the moment. Here we are at the Chill House Good Story, and the boys are cooking up a storm. They're actually doing a new menu, well, operating on getting rid of the old, more of a European style menu for more of a, an Asian influence. So today we just tried the, uh, the Tom Yum soup, which is extremely authentic, and uh, we'll see what comes up next. So Diane has ordered the rice and curry, <laughs> and um, I don't know what, 
fuck is going on because like <laughs> there's no rice. There's plenty, there's plenty of fucking curry. And but, And papadums and but I don't see any curry. But I can't complain because rice is what actually fills you up and makes you feel like shit. So this is a, a, what the hell? Here he comes. The legend bringing the food. Finally got the rice. Yep, and we have the. Uh... Beautiful, thank you. Hers was like half the price of mine, and I get this little bit of tuna. And check out what the fuck she gets. Like, this is bullshit. <laughs> oh, fucking, I always, I mean, oh, no way. Stop. So, Diane, what's the verdict on the uh, dinner tonight? Absolutely amazing, as you can see, yet again. Yeah, there's a few empty plates here. Mm. Somebody had food envy yet again. Yeah, okay, I fucked up and I ordered <laughs> something Western. <laughs> and I had a little tiny plate of But it was like I had to, I had to help you. <laughs> exactly. So it, it was all about, if I had ordered the same as you, yeah. we wouldn't have eaten shit. Yeah, well, we're back at the bottle store and um, it's inside the air-conditioned shopping centre at Cargill's here. And um, I've just picked up the 8.8s, which is uh, pretty much my favourite. And I've got four Carlsbergs, two Apple Riders and a ginger beer. And we've got all those for 4,200 rupee. 4,990. 4,990. So that's about, about 20, 20 US, roughly. So tonight we're at the Fujitsu restaurant next to where we're staying. It's an amazing little venue. We were here last night and the food is five star. We've got a little starter here with the, uh, the Caesar salad. The rest is coming out in a sec. So the rest of the meals have just come out. We've got um, Grungy chicken. Grungy chicken. Yeah. Ebi prawns. Ebi. <laughs> yeah, that a few drinks. So. <laughs> and she Shit's not looking. <laughs> Which one? <Torn we're... laughs> okay. <laughs> one for the blooper reel, maybe. But we'll see. It could still be interesting. So we've arrived at Nipples House, so it's an authentic Sri Lankan home. It's not a homestay, it's a, it's a proper authentic Sri Lankan home. And I'm um, just going to head inside and um, have a bit of a look around. Some bad things come, can come from the people. Uh -huh. So our people, our parents think that you can prevent if you put oh, this thing. Okay, so that's what it's about. Yeah. Alright. Do you call it Bindi? Bindi? You don't call it a bindi? I don't know. There's a picture of uh, Nipple there and he's graduated with his mum. He's very proud. <laughs> Wouldn't be a lot of people getting degrees yeah, in the area, that's for sure. And here we have uh, the building that Nipple's actually building on the property. So he started from the bottom there and he's just put the, the roof on in February. So as they get more money when he does these surf lessons, he comes back and he buys more materials and adds onto the house. So. It's not like you can get a loan for housing in this country, that's for sure. Especially after the crisis we've just had. So here we are, the breakfast has been served. You've got your coffee, you get your omelette and toast. Die, you get fresh fruit, omelette, toast. I get a dog my feet. He won't go away. He's a big lump too. Big Rottweiler. Probably the biggest dog I've seen in freaking Sri Lanka. He wants to sit under me. Like I, like I love dogs, but I just don't love them in restaurants. Like, honestly. So what do you think, Di? I think it's pretty darn good. Yeah. See you guys. In Australia. In Australia. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye.
Okay, so today I'm going to review Lion Lager. It's Sri Lanka's most popular beer. Comes in a, about a 5% and also an 8.8. .8. Most of the local guys buy the 8.8 .8 and you know have two or three and they're shit faced. So we're just going to have one of these as a, as a sundowner. It's like your 5% beer. Okay, so it's got a bit of a lighter sort of lager compared to the Carlsberg I showed last time. A lot lighter in colour. It's got a really hoppy sort of smell. It's actually a lot stronger smell than the actual heavier alcohol beers, to be honest. That's really weird. Really smooth. Really smooth. Um, it's got uh, some fruity aftertaste, almost. A little bit of hoppy sort of flavour. Uh, it's like like a lager, I suppose. Yeah, pretty obviously. But um, you know what? I'll probably buy another one. Talk to you soon.